I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state for camping according to some websites. I loved the idea of being surrounded by nature, away from the noise and stress of the city. I had saved up enough money to buy a tent, a sleeping bag, and some basic supplies. I packed my car and drove to Wilson State Park, where I had reserved a spot online. The park was beautiful, with a large lake and rolling hills. I found my campsite, which was near the edge of the forest. It was spacious and secluded, with a fire pit and a picnic table. I set up my tent and unloaded my stuff. I decided to go for a hike before it got dark. I grabbed a map from the visitor center and followed a trail that led to a scenic overlook. The hike was amazing. I saw deer, rabbits, and birds along the way. The view from the overlook was breathtaking. I could see the lake sparkling in the sun and the forest stretching for miles. I felt a sense of peace and wonder. I took some pictures and headed back to my campsite. I made a fire and cooked some hot dogs and beans. I ate my dinner and watched the stars come out. I felt happy and relaxed. I crawled into my tent and zipped up my sleeping bag. I closed my eyes and drifted off to sleep. I don't know what time it was when I woke up, but it was still dark. I heard a loud thud outside my tent. I jolted awake and grabbed my flashlight. I turned it on and pointed it at the tent wall. I saw a large shadow moving around. It looked like a person, but bigger and bulkier. I heard heavy breathing and grunting. I felt a surge of fear and panic. I shouted, Who's there? What do you want? There was no answer, only more thudding and grunting. I heard something rip through the fabric of my tent. I saw a clawed hand reach in and grab my sleeping bag. I screamed and kicked at the hand. It let go and retreated. I scrambled out of my tent and ran to my car. I fumbled with the keys and unlocked the door. I jumped in and slammed it shut. I started the engine and turned on the headlights. I saw a creature standing in front of my tent. It was about seven feet tall, covered in dark fur, with glowing yellow eyes and sharp teeth. It looked like a cross between a bear and a wolf. It snarled and charged at my car. I hit the gas and drove away as fast as I could. I didn't look back. I drove until I reached the nearest town. I found a motel and checked in. I was shaking and sweating. I called the park ranger and told him what happened. He said he would send someone to check it out. He asked me if I was sure it wasn't a bear or a coyote. I said I was sure. It was something else. Something I had never seen before. I don't know what it was, but I know it was real. I still have nightmares about it. I never went camping again. I always loved camping. There was something about being in nature, away from the noise and stress of the city, that made me feel alive and free. That's why I decided to spend a weekend at Wilderness Escape, a campsite in Wyoming that was rated as one of the best in America. It had everything I wanted, spacious sights, scenic views, hiking trails, and wildlife. I packed my tent, sleeping bag, flashlight, and some food and drove to the campsite on a Friday afternoon. I arrived at the campsite around 4 p.m. and checked in at the office. The staff was friendly and helpful and gave me a map of the campsite and some brochures about the nearby attractions. They also warned me to be careful of bears and other wild animals and to store my food in a secure container or in my car. I thanked them and drove to my site, which was near the edge of the campsite, surrounded by trees and bushes. It was a beautiful spot, with a clear view of the mountains and the lake. I set up my tent, unpacked my stuff, and decided to go for a walk around the campsite. I enjoyed exploring the campsite, which was well maintained and had a lot of amenities. There were picnic tables, fire pits, restrooms, showers, and a playground. There were also some hiking trails that led to the lake, the forest, and the hills. I saw some other campers, who greeted me with a smile and a wave. Everyone seemed friendly and relaxed. I felt happy and peaceful. I returned to my site around 6 p.m. and decided to make a fire and cook some dinner. I gathered some firewood, lit a match, and soon had a cozy fire going. 
I opened a can of beans, put it on a metal plate, and placed it over the fire. I also took out a bottle of water and a granola bar. It was a simple meal, but it tasted good in the fresh air. I ate my dinner, enjoying the warmth of the fire and the sound of the crickets. I looked at the sky, which was getting dark and filled with stars. It was a beautiful night. I decided to go to bed early, since I wanted to get up early and go for a hike. I put out the fire, stored my food in my car, and got into my tent. I zipped up the flap, rolled out my sleeping bag, and lay down. I felt tired but happy. I closed my eyes and drifted off to sleep. I don't know what time it was when I woke up. I just remember feeling a sudden jolt of fear and panic. I heard a loud noise outside my tent, like something heavy and large was moving around. I also heard a low growl, like an animal. I froze, too scared to move or make a sound. I wondered what it was. A bear? A wolf? A mountain lion? I wished I had a weapon, or a phone, or anything to protect myself. I felt helpless and vulnerable. I heard the noise getting closer to my tent. I heard the sound of branches snapping, leaves rustling, and dirt being dug. I heard the animal breathing heavily, sniffing the air, and grunting. I felt its presence, its weight, its power. I felt a surge of adrenaline, and a faint hope. Maybe it was just curious, maybe it would go away, maybe it wouldn't hurt me. I tried to calm myself, to think rationally, to stay quiet. Then I heard a loud rip, and felt a sharp pain in my leg. I screamed, and opened my eyes. I saw a large, furry, brown creature tearing through my tent. It was a bear, a huge, angry, hungry bear. It had smelled my food, and decided to make me its dinner. I quickly grabbed my bear spray and sprayed it at it, and it ran away from there. But my tent was completely ruined. Thankfully I hadn't put the spray in my bag. But I still wonder what would have happened if I had put it in my bag. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state for camping according to some website. I had heard about the stunning scenery the abundant wildlife, and the free campsites. I decided to take a road trip with my old car and explore the wilderness. I packed some basic supplies, a tent, a sleeping bag, and a flashlight. I was ready for an adventure. I drove for hours, enjoying the views of the mountains, the forests, and the plains. I stopped at a gas station to fill up my tank and buy some snacks. I asked the cashier if he knew any good campsites nearby. He pointed me to a map on the wall and said, There's a nice spot by the river, about 20 miles from here. It's called Falcon Ridge Campground. It's free and quiet. You'll love it. I thanked him and followed his directions. I turned off the main road and drove on a dirt road for a while. I saw a sign that said Falcon Ridge Campground and followed it. I arrived at a clearing by the river, surrounded by pine trees. There were a few other cars and tents but it didn't look crowded. I found a spot near the water and set up my tent. I felt a breeze and heard the sound of the river. It was peaceful and relaxing. I decided to go for a walk and explore the area. I saw some birds, squirrels, and deer. I also saw some signs that warned about bears and cougars. I didn't worry too much, as I had a can of pepper spray and a whistle. I figured they would stay away from humans. I enjoyed the nature and the fresh air. I returned to my campsite as the sun was setting. I made a fire and cooked some hot dogs. I ate them with some chips and soda. I felt happy and content. I decided to go to bed early, as I was tired from the drive and the walk. I put out the fire and crawled into my sleeping bag. I zipped up my tent and turned off my flashlight. I closed my eyes and drifted off to sleep. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. I heard a loud noise outside my tent. It sounded like a growl. I felt a surge of fear and grabbed my flashlight. I turned it on and pointed it at the tent wall. I saw a large shadow moving. It looked like a big cat. A cougar. It was circling my tent, sniffing and scratching. I heard it snarl and hiss. I felt a panic and reached for my pepper spray and whistle. 
I couldn't find them. I realized I had left them in the car. I cursed myself for being so careless. I didn't know what to do. I was trapped in my tent, with a hungry cougar outside. I wondered if anyone else in the campground heard the noise and would come to help. I hoped the cougar would lose interest and leave. I stayed still and quiet, hoping not to provoke it. I prayed for a miracle. The cougar didn't leave. It kept prowling around my tent, looking for a way in. It pawed at the zipper, trying to open it. It bit at the fabric, trying to tear it. It roared and clawed, trying to scare me. It was relentless and ruthless. It wanted me for dinner. I felt a surge of adrenaline and decided to fight back. I grabbed my knife and stabbed the tent wall, hoping to scare it away. I yelled and screamed, hoping to alert someone. Then it ran away from there. This experience still gives me chills. I had always wanted to visit Wyoming, the best state for camping according to some sources online. I loved the idea of exploring the vast wilderness, seeing the majestic mountains, and feeling the fresh air. So when I found a cheap cabin rental online, I didn't hesitate to book it for a week. It was located near Wilson State Park, a scenic area with hiking trails, fishing spots, and wildlife viewing opportunities. The cabin looked cozy and rustic in the photos, and the reviews were mostly positive. I packed my bags, grabbed my camera, and drove to Wyoming. The cabin was easy to find, thanks to the directions provided by the owner. It was a small wooden structure, surrounded by pine trees and a dirt road. It had a porch, a fireplace, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. It was simple, but comfortable. I unloaded my car, checked the cabin for any problems, and settled in. I decided to spend the first day relaxing, reading, and enjoying the solitude. I lit a fire, made some tea, and curled up on the couch. It was peaceful and quiet, except for the occasional sound of birds or squirrels outside. The next day, I woke up early and decided to go for a hike. I put on my boots, grabbed my backpack, and headed to the park. I followed a trail that led me to a beautiful lake, where I saw some ducks and geese. I took some photos, had a snack, and continued walking. The trail became steeper and more rugged, but I enjoyed the challenge. I reached a viewpoint, where I could see the snow-capped peaks of the Grand Tetons. I felt a surge of awe and wonder. I took more photos, breathed in the fresh air, and smiled. This was what I came for. I decided to head back to the cabin, as it was getting late. I retraced my steps, feeling tired but happy. I reached the lake, and noticed that the ducks and geese were gone. I shrugged, thinking they must have flown away. I crossed a wooden bridge, and heard a loud splash. I turned around, and saw a huge, dark shape emerge from the water. It looked like a crocodile, but bigger and uglier. It had a long, scaly body, a massive jaw, and yellow eyes. It roared, and lunged at me. I screamed and ran. I dropped my backpack and my camera. I didn't care. I just wanted to get away. I ran as fast as I could, hoping to reach the cabin before the creature caught up with me. I heard it crashing through the trees behind me, snapping its jaws and growling. I felt a surge of adrenaline and fear. I reached the dirt road and saw the cabin in the distance. I ran towards it, praying that the door was unlocked. I reached the porch and tried the knob. It was locked. I cursed and looked for a key. I remembered that the owner had told me to look under the mat. I lifted the mat and saw a key. I grabbed it and inserted it into the lock. I turned it and opened the door. I slammed it shut behind me and locked it. I leaned against the door, panting and sweating. I was safe. I looked around the cabin and felt a wave of relief. Everything was as I had left it. The fire was still burning, the tea was still warm, and the couch was still inviting. I walked over to the couch and sat down. I felt exhausted and shaken. I tried to calm myself and rationalize what had happened. Maybe it was a hallucination or a prank. Maybe it was a wild animal or a mutant. Maybe it was a monster. 
I didn't know, and I didn't care. I just wanted to forget about it, and go home. I decided to call the owner, and tell him what had happened. I reached for my phone, and realized that I had left it in my backpack. I cursed, and wondered what to do. I looked for a landline, but there was none. I looked for a radio, but there was none. I looked for a weapon, but there was none. I was alone, and helpless. I felt a surge of panic, and despair. I decided to wait until morning, and then drive away. I hoped that the creature would not come back, or that it would not be able to break into the cabin. I hoped that I would survive the night. I wrapped myself in a blanket, and lay down on the couch. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't. I kept hearing noises outside, and imagining the worst. I kept checking the door, and the windows. I kept praying, and hoping. I don't know how long I stayed awake, but it felt like forever. I finally saw the first rays of sunlight, and felt a glimmer of hope. I got up, and looked outside. I saw the dirt road, and the pine trees. I saw my car, and my backpack. I saw my camera, and my phone. I saw no sign of the creature. I felt a surge of relief, and joy. I grabbed the key, and unlocked the door. I opened it, and stepped outside. I was free. I walked towards my car, feeling happy and lucky. When I reached my car, I got in and drove away. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state of America for camping. I heard it had amazing scenery, wildlife, and hiking trails. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near a campsite in the Grand Teton National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. The cabin was supposed to be cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a porch. It was located in a secluded area, surrounded by trees and mountains. The campsite was a short walk away, where I could use the facilities and meet other campers. It sounded like the perfect getaway for a solo traveler like me. I arrived at the cabin on a sunny afternoon, after a long drive from Denver. I was greeted by a friendly park ranger, who gave me the keys and some instructions. He told me to be careful of bears and wolves, and to keep my food in a locked container. He also warned me not to wander off the trails, as the park was vast and easy to get lost in. He said he would check on me the next day, and wished me a good stay. I thanked him and drove to the cabin. It looked exactly like the pictures, except for one thing, there was a padlock on the door. I thought it was strange, but I assumed it was for security reasons. I unlocked the door and entered the cabin. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden interior and a stone fireplace. There was a sofa, a table, a chair, and a bookshelf in the living room. The kitchenette had a stove, a sink, a fridge, and some cabinets. The bedroom had a double bed, a dresser, and a closet. The bathroom had a toilet, a sink, and a shower. Everything was clean and tidy, except for some dust and cobwebs. I unpacked my bags and settled in. I decided to explore the campsite and the park before it got dark. I grabbed my backpack, my camera, and my map, and locked the cabin behind me. I walked to the campsite, which was about ten minutes away. The campsite was a large clearing, with a fire pit, a picnic table, and a water faucet. There were several tents and RVs parked around the perimeter, but no one was in sight. I guess they were all out hiking or sightseeing. I felt a bit lonely, but I shrugged it off. I was here to enjoy nature, not to socialize. I filled my water bottle at the faucet and checked the map. There were several trails leading from the campsite to different parts of the park. I chose the one that went to a lake, which was about an hour away. I hoped to see some wildlife and take some photos. I followed the trail, which was well marked and easy to follow. The scenery was breathtaking, with towering mountains, lush forests, and clear streams. I saw some deer, squirrels, and birds, but no bears or wolves. I reached the lake, which was a stunning sight. It was a large, blue body of water, reflecting the sky and the mountains. I took some photos, and sat on a rock to admire the view. I was about to head back, when I heard a loud splash. 
I turned around and saw something emerge from the water. It was a huge black creature with a long, scaly body, a crocodile-like head, and sharp teeth. It looked like a dinosaur or a dragon. It roared and lunged at me. I screamed and ran. I dropped my backpack, my camera, and my map and sprinted back to the trail. The creature chased me, crashing through the trees and the bushes. It was fast, and it was gaining on me. I could hear its breath, its growls, and its snaps. I reached the campsite and looked for help. But there was still no one around. The tents and the RVs were empty. I wondered where everyone was and why they left their stuff behind. I didn't have time to think. I ran to my car, which was parked near the cabin. I fumbled with the keys and got in. I started the engine and drove away. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw the creature burst out of the woods. It was still after me. It ran across the campsite and onto the road. It was faster than my car. It caught up with me and rammed into the back of my car. I lost control and swerved off the road. I crashed into a tree and blacked out and woke up in a hospital bed. I still don't know what that creature was and what it wanted from me. I had always loved camping, and Alaska was my favorite state for it. I decided to spend a weekend at the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins, a family-owned site known for its cleanliness and friendly staff. The park was big rig friendly with over 100 pull-throughs, tent sites, cabins, and even glamping tents. Each site was surrounded by well-groomed trees and greenery, immersing me in the complete Alaskan experience. The first day was peaceful. I set up my tent, took a walk around the vast campground, and enjoyed the serene beauty of Alaska. The trees were tall and dense, their leaves rustling gently in the wind. The air was crisp and fresh, a welcome change from the city's smog. As night fell, I lit a fire and cooked dinner. The stars above were brighter than I'd ever seen, and the silence was only broken by the occasional hoot of an owl or the rustle of leaves. I felt at peace. But the tranquility didn't last. In the middle of the night, I was jolted awake by a strange noise. It sounded like scratching. I strained my ears, trying to pinpoint the source. It seemed to be coming from outside my tent. I unzipped the tent flap and peered out. The fire had died down to embers, casting long, eerie shadows around the campsite. I couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. I decided it must have been a small animal and went back to sleep. The next day, I found deep, claw-like marks on a tree near my tent. They were too big to be from any small animal. A chill ran down my spine. What kind of creature could have made those marks? I spent the day exploring the campground, trying to shake off my unease. But as night fell again, the fear crept back in. I kept the fire burning bright, hoping it would keep any creatures at bay. That night, the scratching sound returned. This time, it was louder, closer. I could hear heavy breathing, like a large animal was right outside my tent. I held my breath, my heart pounding in my chest. Then, as suddenly as it had started, the noise stopped. I waited, listening, but all I could hear was the crackling of the fire and my own heartbeat. I didn't dare to move, didn't dare to breathe. I stayed awake until dawn, too scared to close my eyes. When morning came, I packed up my things and left. I didn't know what had visited my campsite those nights, and I didn't want to find out. As I drove away, I looked back at the Talk RV Village campground and cabins, a place of beauty that had turned into a place of fear for me. Despite the terrifying experience, I still love camping. But now, I always make sure to camp in areas known to be safe from large wildlife. And every time I hear a strange noise in the night, I remember those two nights in Alaska and the fear I felt. I always loved camping, and the double nickel campground in Nebraska was my favorite spot. It was a vast expanse of land, with a variety of amenities that made it feel like a home away from home. The campground was located right off Interstate 80, making it easily accessible. The day started off as any other. 
The sun was shining brightly, casting long shadows of the towering trees that dotted the campground. The air was filled with the sweet scent of pine and the distant chirping of birds. I set up my tent near the mini golf course, a popular spot among campers. As the day wore on, I decided to explore the surrounding area. The campground was buzzing with activity. Families were enjoying picnics, kids were laughing as they played on the swings, and a group of campers were engaged in a lively game of sand volleyball. As night fell, the campground transformed. The once vibrant and bustling place was now quiet and serene. The only sounds were the soft hooting of an owl and the rustling of leaves in the gentle breeze. I decided to call it a night and retreated to my tent. In the middle of the night, I was jolted awake by a strange noise. It sounded like footsteps. I held my breath, straining my ears to pick up any sound. The footsteps seemed to be getting closer. My heart pounded in my chest as I slowly unzipped the tent and peered out. To my relief, it was just a raccoon rummaging through a nearby trash can. I let out a sigh of relief and chuckled at my overactive imagination. I zipped up my tent and settled back into my sleeping bag, the earlier fear now replaced with a sense of peace and tranquility. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of birds chirping. The scare from the previous night seemed like a distant memory as I stepped out of my tent to greet the new day. The sun was just beginning to rise, painting the sky with hues of pink and orange. I took a deep breath, taking in the beauty of the moment. As I packed up my gear and prepared to leave the double nickel campground, I couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude. Despite the scare, it had been an incredible experience. The beauty of the campground, the tranquility of nature, and the thrill of the unknown had made this camping trip one to remember. I had always wanted to hike the Burroughs Mountain Trail in Washington, one of the best states for hiking. It was supposed to offer stunning views of Empty Rainier, the highest peak in the Cascade Range. I decided to go solo, since none of my friends were available or interested in joining me. I packed my backpack with the essentials, water, snacks, map, compass, flashlight, knife, and a tent. I planned to camp overnight at the Sunrise Campground, near the trailhead, and then start my hike early in the morning. The first part of the trail was easy and pleasant, as I followed a gentle slope through a meadow full of wildflowers. I could see the snow-capped summit of M.T. Rainier looming in the distance, and I felt a surge of excitement and awe. I reached the first of the three burrows, a rocky ridge that offered a panoramic view of the mountain and the surrounding valleys. I stopped to take some pictures and catch my breath, feeling proud of myself for making it this far. I continued to the second burrows, which was higher and steeper than the first one. The trail became more challenging, as I had to scramble over boulders and navigate narrow ledges. The wind picked up, and I felt a chill in the air. I put on my jacket and hat, and checked my watch. It was almost noon, and I estimated that I had another hour or so to reach the third and final burrows, the highest accessible point on the mountain at 7,402 feet. I decided to have a quick lunch break before tackling the last stretch. I found a flat spot to sit down and eat my sandwich, enjoying the solitude and the scenery. I didn't see any other hikers on the trail, which was fine by me. I liked the feeling of being alone in nature, away from the noise and stress of the city. I finished my meal and packed up my trash, ready to resume my hike. As I stood up, I heard a rustle in the bushes behind me. I turned around, expecting to see a squirrel or a bird, but instead I saw a pair of yellow eyes staring at me from the shadows. I froze, as a wave of fear washed over me. I realized that I was face to face with a mountain lion, one of the most dangerous predators in the wilderness. I had read about them before, and knew that they were stealthy and elusive, rarely seen by humans. I also knew that they could attack without warning and that they were capable of killing a person with one bite to the neck. I tried to remember what to do in this situation, but my mind went blank. The mountain lion growled, showing its sharp teeth and claws. It crouched low, ready to pounce. I knew I had to act fast, or I would be its next meal. I grabbed my backpack and threw it at the animal, 
hoping to scare it away or at least buy myself some time. The backpack hit the mountain lion in the face, but it didn't seem to phase it. It shook its head and lunged at me, knocking me to the ground. I felt its weight on top of me, and its breath on my neck. I screamed, and reached for my knife, which was in my pocket. I managed to pull it out and stab the mountain lion in the side, hoping to hit a vital organ. The mountain lion yelled, and bit my arm, drawing blood. I stabbed it again, and again, until it finally let go of me and ran away, leaving a trail of blood behind. I lay there, in shock and pain, trying to process what had just happened. I looked at my arm, and saw that it was bleeding profusely. I felt dizzy and nauseous, and wondered if I had contracted rabies or an infection from the bite. I knew I had to get help, or I would die. I reached for my phone, which was in my backpack, but I couldn't find it. I realized that it must have fallen out when I threw the backpack at the mountain lion. I cursed, and felt a surge of panic. I was alone, injured, and without any means of communication. I had no idea how far I was from the nearest ranger station, or if anyone would find me in time. I gathered my strength, and got up. I wrapped my jacket around my arm, trying to stop the bleeding. I picked up my backpack, and looked for the trail. I couldn't see it, as I had wandered off the path during the struggle. I tried to remember which way I had come from, but I was disoriented and confused. I looked around, hoping to find a landmark or a sign, but all I saw were rocks and trees. I felt a wave of despair, and wondered if I would ever make it out alive. I decided to follow the sun, hoping that it would lead me to the east, where I had started my hike. I walked as fast as I could, ignoring the pain and the cold. I prayed that someone would hear me, or see me, or find me. I prayed that I would survive this nightmare, and see my family and friends again. I prayed that I would never have to hike alone again. I don't know how long I walked, or how far I went. I lost track of time and distance. I felt like I was in a trance, or a dream, or a horror movie. I kept walking, until I saw a road, I followed the road, and after following it for about thirty minutes, I reached a town, and there I got treated into a hospital. I had always wanted to go camping in the woods, so when my friend invited me to join him for a weekend trip, I agreed without hesitation. He said he knew a great spot in South Carolina, at Sesquicentennial State Park. He said it was one of the best states for camping, with plenty of trails, wildlife, and scenery to enjoy. We arrived at the park on a Friday afternoon, and set up our tent at a campsite near the lake. The park was huge, covering over 1,400 acres of land. There were other campers around, but not too many. We had enough privacy and space to feel like we were in the wilderness. The campsite was clean and well-maintained, with access to water, toilets, and fire pits. We unpacked our gear, made a fire, and cooked some hot dogs and marshmallows. It was a perfect evening, and we talked and laughed until the stars came out. The next day, we decided to explore the park and do some hiking. We packed some snacks, water, and a map, and headed to the nearest trailhead. The park had over 12 miles of trails, ranging from easy to moderate. We chose a loop trail that circled the lake, and promised to offer some scenic views. The trail was well marked and easy to follow, and we enjoyed the fresh air and the sounds of nature. We saw some birds, squirrels, and deer along the way, but nothing too exciting. We stopped at a picnic area by the lake, and ate our lunch. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the blue sky and the green trees. It was a beautiful sight, and we took some pictures to remember it. We continued our hike, and soon reached the other side of the lake. The trail became more wooded and secluded, and we didn't see any other hikers. We felt like we had the park to ourselves, and we liked it. We joked and sang songs, and had a good time. We didn't notice how late it was getting, until we saw the sun starting to set behind the trees. We checked our map, and realized we still had a few miles to go before we reached our campsite. We quickened our pace, hoping to make it back before dark. We were almost there, when we heard a loud noise in the bushes. 
It sounded like something big and heavy, crashing through the branches. We stopped and looked around, trying to see what it was. We hoped it was just a deer, or maybe a bear. We had heard that there were some black bears in the park, but they were usually shy and harmless. We didn't see anything, but we heard it again, closer this time. It sounded like it was coming towards us fast. We panicked and ran. We didn't know what else to do. We ran as fast as we could, following the trail, hoping to reach our campsite or any sign of civilization. We heard it behind us, getting closer and closer. We didn't dare to look back, but we could feel its presence, its breath, its growl. We screamed, but no one heard us. We were alone, and we were prey. We ran until we couldn't run anymore. We tripped and fell, and rolled down a slope. We landed on the ground, bruised and bleeding. We looked up, and saw it. It was a wolf but not like any wolf we had ever seen. It was huge, bigger than a bear, with black fur and red eyes. It had long, sharp teeth and claws, and a scarred face. It looked like a monster, a nightmare, a beast. It looked at us, and we looked at it. We knew we were going to die. It lunged at us, and we closed our eyes. We waited for the pain, the blood, the end. But it never came. Instead, we heard a gunshot and a thud. We opened our eyes and saw the wolf lying on the ground, motionless. A bullet hole in its head. We looked around and saw a man standing over us, holding a rifle. He was wearing a park ranger uniform and had a badge on his chest. He looked at us and smiled. Are you guys okay? He asked. You're lucky I was patrolling this area. That thing has been killing campers for weeks. I've been trying to track it down, but it's been too smart and too fast. Until now. I finally got it. It's over. You're safe. We couldn't believe it. We were alive. We were saved. We thanked the ranger and hugged him. He helped us up and led us to his truck. He drove us to our campsite and checked our wounds. He said we were fine, just some cuts and bruises. He said he would report the incident. He said we should pack our stuff and leave the park as soon as possible. We agreed. We packed our stuff and left the park. We never went camping again. I had always wanted to hike the Kasugi Ridge Trail in Alaska, ever since I read about it online. It was supposed to be one of the most scenic and beautiful trails in the country with views of the Alaska Range and Denali, the highest peak in North America. I decided to go solo, as I enjoyed the solitude and freedom of hiking by myself. I packed my backpack with the essentials, water, food, tent, sleeping bag, map, compass, flashlight, knife, and bear spray. I also brought my camera, as I wanted to capture the stunning landscapes along the way. The trail was 27 miles long, and I planned to do it in three days. I started early in the morning, feeling excited and eager to explore the wilderness. The first day was mostly uphill, as I climbed through dense forests and alpine meadows. I saw some wildlife, such as moose, caribou, and eagles, but no signs of bears. I reached the ridge by noon, and was greeted by a breathtaking panorama of snow-capped mountains, vast glaciers, and pristine lakes. I felt a surge of awe and joy as I realized how lucky I was to be there. I took some photos and continued along the ridge, following the trail markers. The second day was easier, as the trail was mostly flat and smooth. I enjoyed the views and the feeling of being on top of the world. I met a few other hikers along the way and exchanged some friendly greetings and tips. They told me to watch out for the weather, as it could change quickly and unpredictably. They also warned me about the bears, and advised me to make noise and keep my food in a bear-proof container. I thanked them, and assured them that I was prepared and careful. I reached a campsite by a lake, and set up my tent. I cooked some dinner, and watched the sunset over the mountains. I felt peaceful and relaxed, as I crawled into my sleeping bag. The third day was supposed to be the easiest, as the trail was mostly downhill and downhill. I woke up early and packed my things. I checked the weather 
and saw that it was clear and sunny. I felt confident and happy as I started the final stretch of the trail. I expected to reach the trailhead by noon and catch a shuttle back to my car. I thought about how much I enjoyed the hike and how proud I was of myself for doing it solo. That's when things went wrong. About an hour into the hike, I noticed that the trail markers were becoming less frequent and less visible. I checked my map and saw that I was still on the right path. I shrugged it off and kept going. Maybe they ran out of paint, or maybe the wind and snow had erased them. I was not worried, as I had my compass and my GPS. I trusted my navigation skills and followed the trail. Another hour passed, and I realized that I had not seen any other hikers for a while. I checked my GPS and saw that I had no signal. I checked my compass and saw that it was spinning erratically. I felt a pang of fear and stopped. I looked around and saw that the landscape had changed. The ridge was gone and I was surrounded by a barren and rocky terrain. There were no trees, no grass, no flowers, no water. There was only dust, rocks, and bones. Bones of animals and bones of humans. I felt a chill and shivered. Where was I? How did I get here? What was this place? I tried to calm myself and think rationally. Maybe I had taken a wrong turn, or maybe I had wandered off the trail. Maybe this was a temporary glitch, or maybe this was a hallucination. Maybe I was dehydrated, or maybe I was dreaming. I pinched myself and felt pain. I was awake, and this was real. I had to find a way out, and fast. I decided to backtrack and retrace my steps. I hoped to find the ridge, or the trail markers, or anything familiar. I turned around and started walking. I walked for what seemed like hours, but I saw no change. The landscape was still the same, dust, rocks, and bones. I felt a growing sense of panic and desperation. I screamed and heard no echo. I was alone and lost. I checked my watch and saw that it was noon. I should have reached the trailhead by now, but I was nowhere near it. I checked my water bottle and saw that it was empty. I checked my food bag and saw that it was torn. I checked my tent and saw that it was ripped. I checked my sleeping bag and saw that it was stained. I checked my camera and saw that it was broken. I checked my knife and saw that it was dull. I checked my bear spray and sprayed it, and it quickly ran from away. This is by far the scariest experience I ever had while hiking. I always wanted to go camping in Colorado, one of the best states for camping. I heard it had amazing scenery, diverse wildlife, and plenty of trails to explore. So when my friend Jake invited me to join him for a weekend trip to Eisenhower State Park, I jumped at the chance. We arrived at the park on Friday afternoon and set up our tent at one of the campsites near the lake. The park was huge, covering over 1,800 acres of land. It had a variety of habitats, from prairie to forest to rocky hills. The campsite was spacious and had a fire ring, a picnic table, and a water faucet. We could see the lake sparkling in the sun and the mountains looming in the distance. We decided to go for a hike before it got dark. We grabbed our backpacks and headed to the trailhead, which was about a mile from our campsite. The trail was marked with blue blazes and signs that said it was a moderate loop of about four miles. We figured we could finish it in a couple of hours and be back in time for dinner. The hike started off easy, following the shore of the lake. We saw some ducks and geese swimming in the water and some deer grazing in the meadow. We chatted and joked as we walked, enjoying the fresh air and the views. The trail then turned into the woods, where it got steeper and rockier. We had to climb over some boulders and cross some streams. The trees were thick and shady blocking out most of the sunlight. We felt a chill in the air and heard the wind rustling the leaves. We came to a fork in the trail, where a sign pointed to the left and said, Eisenhower Loop two miles. To the right, there was no sign, just a faint path that looked like it had been made by animals. Jake suggested that we take the right path, saying it might be a shortcut 
or a more scenic route. I was hesitant, but he convinced me that it would be fun and adventurous. He said we had plenty of time and that we could always turn back if we got lost. We followed the right path, which soon became narrower and harder to follow. It seemed to lead us deeper into the woods, away from the lake and the main trail. We saw no signs of other hikers or park rangers. We only saw animal tracks, mostly deer and raccoon, but also some that looked like bear or cougar. We heard some strange noises, too, like growls and howls and screeches. Jake said they were probably just coyotes or owls, but I was getting nervous. We walked for about an hour, but we didn't seem to be getting anywhere. The path kept twisting and turning, sometimes splitting into two or three branches, sometimes disappearing altogether. We had no idea where we were or which way to go. We checked our phones, but we had no signal. We checked our watches, but it was getting late. The sun was setting and the shadows were growing longer. We realized we had made a big mistake. We decided to turn back and try to find the main trail. We retraced our steps as best as we could, but it was hard to tell which way we had come from. The path looked different in the fading light. We kept walking, hoping to see a familiar landmark or a blue blaze. But we only saw more trees and rocks and darkness. We started to panic. We knew we were lost and alone in the woods. We knew we had no food, no water, no flashlight, no map, no compass, no knife, no whistle, no matches, no nothing. We knew we were in danger of getting attacked by wild animals, or falling off a cliff, or freezing to death. We knew we had to find our way back to our campsite, or to the park entrance, or to the nearest road, or to anyone who could help us. We kept walking, faster and faster. We kept walking and walking, and finally reached a trailhead. We were lucky, but this experience still scares me. I had always wanted to go camping in Colorado, so when my friend invited me to join him for a weekend at Pinion Flats Campground, I jumped at the chance. He said it was one of the best campgrounds in the state, with stunning views of the Great Sand Dunes National Park. He also said there were plenty of hiking trails and wildlife to see. It sounded like the perfect getaway from the city. We arrived on Friday afternoon and set up our tent at a spacious site near the creek. The campground was not too crowded, but there were enough people around to make it feel safe and friendly. We cooked some burgers on the fire pit and enjoyed the sunset over the dunes. It was a beautiful night, and we decided to go for a walk after dinner. We followed a trail that led us to the edge of the park, where the sand dunes rose like giant waves. The moon was bright and cast a silver glow on the sand. It was a surreal sight, and we felt like we were on another planet. We climbed up one of the dunes and sat down to admire the view. We could see the stars twinkling in the sky and the lights of the campground in the distance. We talked about our lives, our dreams, and our fears. We felt a bond that only nature can create. We decided to head back to the tent before it got too late. We descended the dune and followed the trail back to the campground. As we walked, we noticed that the night was unusually quiet. There were no sounds of crickets owls, or coyotes. There was only the sound of our footsteps on the sand. We shrugged it off and kept walking. We reached the campground and looked for our site. We couldn't find it. We walked around the loop, but none of the tents looked familiar. We checked the site numbers, but they didn't match ours. We were confused and scared. How could we lose our site? Where was our tent? Where was our car? We started to panic. We ran to the campground office, but it was closed. We knocked on the door, but no one answered. We looked for a phone, but there was none. We looked for other campers, but there was no one. The campground was empty. It was like everyone had vanished. We didn't know what to do. We felt trapped and alone. We wondered if we had wandered into a different dimension, or if we were dreaming, or if we were dead. We tried to calm ourselves and think rationally. We decided to go back to the trail and retrace our steps. Maybe we had taken a wrong turn somewhere. Maybe we could find our way back. We ran to the trail and followed it to the dunes. 
We climbed up the same dune we had been on before and looked around. The view was different. The moon was gone. The stars were gone. The lights of the campground were gone. There was only darkness. We felt a cold wind blow on our faces. We heard a low growl behind us. We turned around and saw a pair of glowing red eyes staring at us. We screamed and ran down the dune. We didn't know what it was, but we knew it was not friendly. We ran as fast as we could, but we could hear it chasing us. We could hear its heavy breathing and its sharp claws digging into the sand. We knew it was faster than us. We knew it was stronger than us. We knew it was going to catch us. We knew we were going to die. We reached the end of the trail and saw a road and people. This experience still gives me chills. I always loved hiking alone. It gave me a sense of freedom and adventure, and a chance to escape from the stress and noise of the city. That's why I decided to take a solo trip to the Grand Canyon in Arizona, one of the most beautiful and majestic places in America. I planned to hike the Bright Angel Trail, a 9.5 mile long trail that descends from the South Rim to the Colorado River. I had heard that it was one of the most scenic and challenging trails in the park, and I was eager to test my skills and endurance. I started my hike early in the morning, carrying a backpack with water, food, sunscreen, a flashlight, a map, and a first aid kit. I also had a cell phone, but I knew that the signal was weak or non-existent in most parts of the canyon. I was confident that I could handle any situation that might arise. The first part of the trail was easy and enjoyable. I admired the stunning views of the canyon walls, the colorful rock formations, and the diverse vegetation. I saw some other hikers along the way, but they were few and far between. I felt like I had the whole place to myself. As I descended deeper into the canyon, the trail became steeper and narrower. The temperature also rose significantly, and I started to sweat profusely. I drank water frequently and applied sunscreen to avoid dehydration and sunburn. I also took some breaks to rest and eat some snacks. After about four hours of hiking, I reached the Indian Garden Campground, a shady oasis with a water source and a ranger station. I decided to stop there for a while and refill my water bottles. I also checked the map and saw that I had covered about two-thirds of the trail. I felt proud of my progress and decided to continue. The next part of the trail was the most difficult and dangerous. It was called the Devil's Corkscrew, a series of steep switchbacks that zigzagged down a rocky slope. The trail was exposed to the sun and the wind, and there was no shade or water. I had to be very careful not to slip or fall. As I was making my way down the Devil's Corkscrew, I heard a loud noise behind me. It sounded like a rock slide or an earthquake. I turned around and saw a huge cloud of dust and debris coming towards me. I realized that the trail had collapsed and I was in the path of a landslide. I panicked and ran as fast as I could, trying to outrun the avalanche. I looked for a place to hide or take cover, but there was none. I was trapped between the falling rocks and the edge of the cliff. I felt a sharp pain in my leg as a boulder hit me and knocked me off balance. I screamed as I fell into the abyss. I don't know how long I was unconscious. When I woke up, I was lying on the ground, covered in blood and dirt. I tried to move, but I couldn't. I felt a crushing weight on my chest and legs. I looked around and saw that I was buried under a pile of rocks. I was still alive, but barely. I reached for my cell phone, hoping to call for help. But it was smashed and useless. I also checked my backpack, but it was torn and empty. All my supplies were gone. I was alone, injured, and trapped. I had no way of contacting anyone or getting out. I started to cry and scream, hoping that someone would hear me and rescue me. But no one came. I was too far from the trail and the campground. But I kept walking and walking until I reached a trail. I didn't recognize it, but I followed it, and it led me to a trailhead where I found help. This experience still gives me chills and scares me. I had always wanted to go camping in Kansas, 
which was ranked as one of the best states for camping in America. I had read about the beautiful scenery, the diverse wildlife, and the numerous hiking trails that the state had to offer. I decided to book a cabin at Canopolis Lake State Park, which was located in the Smoky Hills region and contained a reservoir, desert plants, a prairie dog town, and scenic sandstone canyons. It sounded like the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the park on a sunny afternoon and checked in at the ranger station. The ranger gave me a map and directions to my cabin, which was located on the north shore of the lake. He also warned me to be careful of the wildlife, especially the coyotes, rattlesnakes, and mountain lions that roamed the area. He said they usually kept their distance from humans, but it was better to be safe than sorry. I thanked him and drove to my cabin, which was about 15 minutes away. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden exterior and a metal roof. It had a living room, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom with a queen-sized bed. It also had a porch with a rocking chair and a grill. I unloaded my car and settled in, feeling excited about my solo adventure. I decided to explore the park a bit before it got dark, so I grabbed my backpack, my camera, and my hiking boots and headed out. I followed a trail that led me to the edge of the lake, where I saw a stunning view of the water and the hills. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the blue sky and the white clouds. The hills were covered with green grass, yellow flowers, and red rocks. I snapped some photos and admired the scenery, feeling a sense of peace and wonder. I continued along the trail, which wound through the hills and canyons, and saw some interesting sights along the way. I saw a group of prairie dogs popping in and out of their burrows, making squeaky noises. I saw a cactus with bright pink flowers, attracting hummingbirds and bees. I saw a coyote trotting across the field, looking for prey. I saw a rattlesnake coiled up under a rock, sunning itself. I saw a mountain lion perched on a ledge, watching me with yellow eyes. I was amazed by the diversity and beauty of the park, but I also felt a bit nervous and uneasy. I realized that I was alone in a wild and unfamiliar place, surrounded by animals that could harm me. I decided to head back to my cabin, as the sun was starting to set and the shadows were growing longer. I retraced my steps and followed the trail back to the lake, hoping to get there before dark. As I was walking, I heard a loud roar behind me. I turned around and saw the mountain lion that I had seen earlier, running towards me at full speed. It had a hungry and angry look on its face, and it was clear that it wanted to attack me. I panicked and ran as fast as I could, hoping to reach the cabin or the ranger station. I knew that running was not the best idea, as it would trigger the mountain lion's predatory instincts, but I had no other choice. I had no weapon, no phone, and no one to help me. I was on my own. I ran for what seemed like an eternity. I quickly grabbed my pepper spray and sprayed it at the mountain lion. It stopped in its tracks, and I ran away from there. I didn't see it again, but I still wonder what would have happened if I had not carried the pepper spray with me. I had always wanted to go camping in the woods, so when my friend invited me to join him for a weekend trip, I agreed without hesitation. He said he knew a great spot in South Carolina at Sesquicentennial State Park. He said it was one of the best states for camping, with plenty of trails, wildlife, and scenery to enjoy. We arrived at the park on a Friday afternoon and set up our tent at a campsite near the lake. The park was huge, covering over 1,400 acres of land. There were other campers around, but not too many. We had enough privacy and space to feel like we were in the wilderness. The campsite was clean and well-maintained, with access to water, toilets, and fire pits. We unpacked our gear, made a fire, and cooked some hot dogs and marshmallows. It was a perfect evening, and we talked and laughed until the stars came out. The next day, we decided to explore the park and do some hiking. We packed some snacks, water, and a map, and headed to the nearest trailhead. The park had over 12 miles of trails ranging from easy to moderate. We chose a loop trail that circled the lake and promised to offer some scenic views. The trail was well marked and easy to follow, 
and we enjoyed the fresh air and the sounds of nature. We saw some birds, squirrels, and deer along the way, but nothing too exciting. We stopped at a picnic area by the lake and ate our lunch. The lake was calm and clear, reflecting the blue sky and the green trees. It was a beautiful sight, and we took some pictures to remember it. We continued our hike, and soon reached the other side of the lake. The trail became more wooded and secluded, and we didn't see any other hikers. We felt like we had the park to ourselves, and we liked it. We joked and sang songs, and had a good time. We didn't notice how late it was getting, until we saw the sun starting to set behind the trees. We checked our map, and realized we still had a few miles to go before we reached our campsite. We quickened our pace, hoping to make it back before dark. We were almost there, when we heard a loud noise in the bushes. It sounded like something big and heavy, crashing through the branches. We stopped and looked around, trying to see what it was. We hoped it was just a deer, or maybe a bear. We had heard that there were some black bears in the park, but they were usually shy and harmless. We didn't see anything, but we heard it again, closer this time. It sounded like it was coming towards us fast. We panicked and ran. We didn't know what else to do. We ran as fast as we could, following the trail, hoping to reach our campsite, or any sign of civilization. We heard it behind us, getting closer and closer. We didn't dare to look back, but we could feel its presence, its breath, its growl. We screamed, but no one heard us. We were alone, and we were prey. We ran until we couldn't run anymore. We tripped and fell, and rolled down a slope. We landed on the ground, bruised and bleeding. We looked up, and saw it. It was a wolf, but not like any wolf we had ever seen. It was huge, bigger than a bear, with black fur and red eyes. It had long, sharp teeth and claws, and a scarred face. It looked like a monster, a nightmare, a beast. It looked at us, and we looked at it. We knew we were going to die. It lunged at us, and we closed our eyes. We waited for the pain, the blood, the end. But it never came. Instead, we heard a gunshot and a thud. We opened our eyes, and saw the wolf lying on the ground, motionless. A bullet hole in its head. We looked around, and saw a man standing over us, holding a rifle. He was wearing a park ranger uniform, and had a badge on his chest. He looked at us, and smiled. Are you guys okay? He asked. You're lucky I was patrolling this area. That thing has been killing campers for weeks. I've been trying to track it down, but it's been too smart and too fast. Until now. I finally got it. It's over. You're safe. We couldn't believe it. We were alive. We were saved. We thanked the ranger and hugged him. He helped us up and led us to his truck. He drove us to our campsite and checked our wounds. He said we were fine, just some cuts and bruises. He said he would report the incident. He said we should pack our stuff and leave the park as soon as possible. We agreed. We packed our stuff and left the park. We never went camping again.